Hello and welcome to our series of lectures on probability and distributions. We're going to start off our series looking at how we simulate probability using the R environment. As a reference problem, we'll look at a card dealing situation. We have a standard deck of 52 cards, 13 hearts, and 39 non-hearts, 13 spades, 13 clubs, and 13 diamonds in the deck. And the question that is posed by our author, we're going to work on question A. What is the probability that exactly five deals are required? We shuffle the deck and we flip over cards until the first heart comes up. What's the probability it takes exactly five times flipping up the cards until that happens? So the first one is not a heart, the second one's not a heart, the third one's not a heart, the fourth one's not a heart, the fifth one is. As we think about this problem, and, and the other problems you can see there, it's convenient to know, we may be able to compute that one directly, but it's convenient to know the complete probability distribution of what's going on here. If we think about the potential outcomes, it could take anywhere from 1 to 40 flips of the card before you encounter the, the deals, before you encounter the first heart. Now, it being 40 would be exceptionally rare. You'd have the 39 clubs, spades, and diamonds as the first 39 cards in the shuffled deck, and those last 13 are all the hearts. Well, that wasn't a very good job of shuffling, we would think, although it's non-zero probability that that's in fact going to happen even with a well-shuffled deck. Let's look at how we compute these probabilities. The first of these, what's the probability that the first card we turn up is in fact a heart, that the one at the top of the deck is a heart? Well, there's 13 hearts in the deck out of 52, one chance in four. 25% of the time, the heart is that first card. Okay, well, what about two? What's the probability that it's the second card that we, ter that we deal that is, in fact, the first heart? Well, firstly, the first card has to not be a heart for that to be true. Now, there's 39 non-hearts in the deck of 52, and then there's 51 cards left, 13 of which are hearts. So, 39 over 52 times 13 over 51 gives us about a 19% probability that, in fact, it's the second card that is the first heart. And you can continue this process for three, four, five, and so forth. And in particular, if you do so, we see that we can analytically come to the answer for our problem at hand. What is the probability that exactly five deals are required before we see the first heart? It's about 8% of the time, 8.2. Great. Well, let's see if we can confirm these numbers by doing the experiment in real life. We take our deck of cards, we shuffle it, and we actually start dealing until we get to the first heart. However many flips that was, we write that number down. Shuffle the deck again, and again, we deal out until we see the first heart. We can continue doing that. It takes several seconds to shuffle the deck and deal. Uh, we could do this hundreds of times, but it would take us a long time before we could really get much of a sample size in our experiment. But we could simulate this on a computer relatively easily. So by using the facilities within the R environment, we could in fact do this thousands of times in a mere couple of seconds once we've programmed R to, to do this. There's a lot of convenient functions in R for doing probabilistic uh, functions of this type. Getting the original deck of cards and uh, shuffling the deck and then searching for the hearts. We'll see how to do that and how, in fact, we build these simulation environments. So to start off with, we need to build our deck of cards. Uh, it's simple string concatenation. I don't care about the denomination of the cards, just the suit. So that whether it's a 2, 3, 8, king, or jack, I don't care about that. So I'm just representing my deck of cards by the suit that they are, by the letter of the suit. So 13 S's, 13 H's, 13 D's, and 13 C's concatenated together. That's my deck of cards. So we see that that's, that's what we'd expect. What we need to do now is shuffle the deck. The function in R that does that for us is the sample function. We're drawing a sample of our cards. In fact, the sample of 52 out of our deck of 52 is going to be a random sample. So we pick a card at random from the deck and stick it on top. That's effectively what we're doing here with a sample. We take the remaining 51 cards in the deck, draw a random card from that, and stick that along with our first card and so forth. That's, real, that's where the sample function comes from. We can think of it as shuffling the deck, and in this particular case, it was the third card in the deck that ended up being our first heart. 
We could do it again. We could shuffle the deck again. In that particular case, it was the second card in the deck that was the first heart. We could do this a lot. That's cut down the time quite a bit. It doesn't take us a minute to shuffle and deal. We can do this in a matter of a second or two, but what would be better yet is if we allowed R to do all the work for us. Let it reshuffle the deck a thousand times and, re and redeal the deck a thousand times and get out of those thousand experiments the answers that we want. And then we can look how many times was it one flip of the card for the first heart, how many times was it the second card in the deck, and so forth. So what we need to do there is first we need a function for finding the first heart in the deck algorithmically. So the grep function is what we want for that. Grep comes from the general regular expression processing uh, command from Unix and, and Linux, which searches for strings within a file. Similarly, in R, the grep function takes a string and looks for the occurrences of that within a list. So we have this list of letters that is in the array shuffle, in, in the variable shuffle. And we want to <clears throat> want to grep that shuffle list for where all the H's are. And in fact, it, notice it returns an array of integers, 2, 4, 9, and so forth. The second position is an H. The fourth position is an H. The ninth is an H, and so forth. So that tells us the position of all the H's in the list shuffle. Well, we don't need all 13 hearts. We don't need to know where they all are. We just need to know where the first one is. So the first element of this array is what we need to pull off. And that's what we want to put into our loop. So if we loop n times, I've set it to 1500 here just to start us off with something. Then we go through and we shuffle the deck, we search for it, and we just successively increment where we're putting the answer in this array deals that we've constructed, which is where we're going to store the answers. So deals is now an array of 1,500 items, which is the answer to this experiment that we did now 1,500 times. The first few of those, as it turns out, of the, fir of the, six, uh, the first six experiments, four of them happened to be the first, uh, the, the first card in the deck was, was a heart, which is unusual, we think. We think it happens about 25% of the time, as it turns out, four of the first six. Well, how many overall, though? If we use the table function, it tells us how many ones are in that array deals, how many twos, how many threes, how many fours, and so forth. Tabulate the results of that experiment. So there were 378 times out of 1,500 that, in fact, the heart was the first card on the deck. Of those 1,500 times we did this simulation, 275 of those the second card in the deck was the first heart, and so forth. Well, remember, we, we computed those as proportions before, 25% uh, for 1 and 19% for 2. So let's just divide that by 1,500 to get it on the same scale. And there we see, in fact, pretty close to 25% of the items were uh, the first card, and 18 instead of 19% were 2. Let's take a look at... Uh, how many times it was the fifth card in the deck, and that's about 8.1% of the time, as opposed to 8.2, which we computed analytically. There we go. That's uh, a pretty close to the answers that we had come up with deriving this analytically. Notice of the 1,500 times that we did this experiment, the maximum number of times was uh, 20. Uh, as it turns out, we didn't get close to 40. In fact, I've, I've gone through this video half a dozen times recording it, and I've never seen a 40, as it turns out. But, you know, it's a non-zero probability, but very, very small. In another video, we'll talk more about how to operationalize these loops better and some of the details about how to do it. But you could take this pattern of how to do probabilistic simulation in many different contexts, just with a different experiment. But this pattern of have an array where you store the results, loop over and put the answers in that array, and then study the elements of the, of the array as the results of the experiment. That's a very general pattern you can use in many different contexts for understanding probability.